Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be going over some more glass morphism stuff because you guys absolutely love that last video. It got about, I think almost 2000 views within like the first couple of days. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make another scene for fun and I'll show you guys like some really cool techniques we can implement um, to create a really cool render. So let's go ahead and first add in a plane and let's scale it up by 10. Um, again, I'm really going off the cuff here guys. There's gen genuinely no plan going into this. Um, hop into your camera real quick and let's just set up an easy camera angle for our isometric view. Give our uh, camera an orthographic perspective um, and then let's go ahead and change our dimensions to 1080 by 1920. Oops, 1080, there we go. Perfect. So this is an Instagram portrait kind of orientation. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to render view, cycles, and I'm just gonna go to my GPU and add in an HDRI here. Um, and I just want to have like a really simple HDRI for our scene. This one's fantastic. I love, I just love this HDRI because it has very strong points of contrast. Um, we got these windows and then these darker areas and then of course the light background. So we're going to use this for our render. So one of the very first things I'm going to do is I'm going to add one of my favorite shaders that I love to call a grid floor shader. So in our shading tab, click on new, add in a brick texture, and let's just make a nice little metallic floor for our render change that offset to zero and then you can just punch in the following values um, I'm think I'm gonna do like 10 for the scale mortar size we'll do 0 0.01 and then for the height and the width we're gonna make those the same and now I'm gonna snap back to my camera view go to rendered view and this is looking great already I'm gonna actually hover over this first color copy that paste it over the second color and then for our mortar, I think I'm just gonna give it a very, very light color. Now for our camera, I'm going to go to viewport display and I'm gonna raise this value, which kind of narrows us in on our scene here a little bit. You don't have to put it up all the way, um, but I just think that looks good. Um, another thing I'm going to do is probably eventually enable the depth of field, but let's go ahead and just start adding some objects into our scene. I'm gonna go to my solid view so we can start placing some objects. I'm gonna go to add mesh. And then I think I'm gonna start with a cylinder i'm going to scale it on the z-axis and i'm going to bring it up i'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on our x-axis and then i'm going to apply the scale now i'm going to kind of go right under here and just make sure it's just barely touching the floor that looks perfect and we'll be able to tell better when we go to render view but with this selected let's add a bevel modifier let's add an edge split modifier and a subdivision surface modifier I'm just going to give this the slightest little bevel and I'm gonna give it like maybe eight segments. I'm gonna shade it smooth and bump that subdiv up to two. And let's go ahead to render view and see where this is in our scene. Okay, it's about right there, that's perfect. And let's give it a glass shader, glass BSDF. Roughness, I'm gonna set that to like 0.25 and then it's already looking really, really cool. Um, the IOR, you can mess with this value. I'm gonna try like, 1.3 and see kind of where that gets us and then I'm gonna give this like a nice color here I think I'm gonna give it just a slight blue color like that and already this is looking really cool now I'm also going to enable caustics so I'm gonna to go to my object properties shading cast shadow caustics and then I'm gonna click on my floor and I'm gonna click on receive shadow caustics now you're not gonna to notice too much of a difference and that's because we have to introduce our own light source into the scene so I'm gonna click on add light point light and now you're still not going to notice a difference and that is because we also need to enable caustics on that as well so go ahead and click on shadow caustics and then we're going to go ahead and go to our top down view and we are going to go ahead and see if these shadow caustics are working now right now we're at about 10 watts for our, our power i'm going to turn this up to like 500 and now you can see that our shadow caustics are working the other thing i'm going to do is show you guys really quick this radius here if you turn this to zero Look at how sharp our shadows are now, our shadow caustics. You guys can clearly see the difference here, right? This is really interesting because when we start to move this around, you'll notice it looks fantastic, but when you adjust that radius to something like 0.1, you'll notice that it's just ever so slightly blurred right here. It's kind of hard to see, but yeah, I'll do a higher value, 0.5. You can see now that we still have caustics, but they're just a little bit more subtle. Now you guys can adjust this value to whatever you want. I think I'm gonna set mine to like 0.3 and we'll just keep it at, at that point right there. So with our point selected, I'm also gonna find a really nice area of 
contrast on the Y axis. I'm gonna bring it down. You can see that as I adjust this, we get completely different results. I'm also going to raise the contrast in our scene to high contrast. And then I'm gonna take my HDRI and I think I'm going to try something a little bit darker. Let's try this, <laughs> there we go. So now you guys can see the complete difference here. So I'm gonna actually swap this out one more time because I'm not happy with that one either. Be careful with the actual texture you choose because depending on what it is, it's going to really change your entire scene. You don't want it to be too bright. In fact, I might even just go with a, instead of an environment texture, guys, apologies, I might go with just a hue saturation value here. And I might just turn it all the way dark like this or like slightly darker. I think that looks good. Now, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna enable some depth of field to kind of see how this can drastically change our scene. And already just like that, you can see how crazy the scene changes when you enable that depth of field. I'm gonna take our, our uh, cylinder here, make sure you save your project frequently, and I'm just gonna move it along the X and Y, and then I'm gonna duplicate it, move that along the Y and the X, and let's go ahead and create a nice overlapping effect here. I'm gonna duplicate my material on this second blue disc, and I'm gonna make this, you guessed it, a nice light orange like that. And just like that, guys, we already have some more dynamic like aspects to our scene here. Um, I'm also going to maybe lower the exposure just a little bit. That looks good. Um, you guys can adjust all this in post-production as well, but I'm just trying to experiment with different values. Um, I'm going to duplicate our cylinder again, drag that along the X and the Y, and I'm gonna kind of put it towards the back of our scene here. I don't want this one to be as important, so I'm gonna duplicate this color reduce that saturation, and I'm gonna just slightly sway it towards the green, like just ever so slightly. Something like maybe that, or even just slightly blue. That looks just about what I was looking for there. And again, you guys can mess with the roughness. This is a roughness of zero. This is a really high roughness. Now when you set the roughness too high, it honestly doesn't look that great. So just experiment with your values, see what you guys can come up with. And then of course the actual IOR itself, you can also adjust as needed. I think I'm gonna keep this at a really, really, really low value. These are both at 1.3, so I might make this 1.3 as well. And I just think this is already looking so cool. Um, I love the way these caustics are coming through. They look so good. Uh, let's go ahead and mess around with our scene just a little bit more. I think I'm gonna add in a, how about a plane? And I'm gonna move it along the X and why and i'm going to pop this up uh beyond our floor here i just lost it where is it there it is all right i'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it up beyond our floor and then i'm going to give this a solidify modifier where is that solidify cool and i'm going to go to my solid view to kind of make sure we have some solidity to this that looks just about perfect go ahead and apply that and then add in a bevel modifier just ever so slightly bevel those edges and give them some segments and then go back to rendered view. Now what's cool about this is we can actually rotate this on the X axis, bring it up, bring it over on the Y, or sorry, the X, just like that. And we can enable caustics for this as well. So right now this is kind of just hovering over this uh, right here. You know, we can probably duplicate this as well and make a mirror on this end here. But right now I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna give it a glass BSDF with a low roughness, maybe like 0.2 might do it, and then 1.5 for the IOR. This looks really good, and then I think I might even just mess with the color just a little bit. Cool. Again, these are really just glass shaders. You guys don't have to overthink these. Um, I'm gonna put it really, really close to the floor. That looks good. Um, and you guys can pretty much do whatever you want with these. I'm gonna duplicate this again bring it along the X, and then I'm gonna rotate it on the Z axis, 90 degrees, go to my solid view, make everything random colors, go to my top down view, and I'm gonna put this right about here, and I want this thing to actually be a reflective mirror and reflect everything, because I'm just curious you know, how that'll add to our scene, if it will or it won't. So let's go ahead to render view, and with this selected, I'm just gonna make an entirely new material give it a high metallic value with a low roughness. 
And as you can see, we have this nice mirror effect. Now, do I think this looks good? I'm not sure. Did I think it would? Kind of, but again, you guys have to like experiment with this stuff. Um, it's interesting what happens when you take something and you just mess around with like just the angles. Um, let's see, move this along the Y. It kind of just adds an interesting dynamic to the scene. Um, and you can kind of tell that this is a really sharp mirror and it looks really cool. Um, I actually really enjoy kind of the way that that makes the scene look. It's just kind of fun and modern. And especially when you stick to these very primitive shapes, there's a lot of cool things that you can do here. All right, let's go ahead and add in a cube. Now I'm just gonna probably make this the last object in our scene. I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down. I'm going to bring it like right here, give it some like random kind of rotation, bring it just beyond this. And I'm gonna give it the absolute slightest bevel ever. It's gonna be so slight, you're barely gonna be able to see it. Something like that. And then again, shade auto smooth. And we're gonna to go to rendered view and we're gonna give this a glass shader. And I think I'm gonna make this like point to roughness. Uh, and then 1.45, that's fine. Make sure you enable shadow caustics. I also did not have it enabled for this one right here. So make sure that is enabled when you guys are doing this stuff. I'm also gonna go to my floor plane and check on that roughness level, maybe bring it a little bit higher. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mess around with the rotation of our cube a little bit more. That looks good. Maybe bring the roughness down too. Cool. Now I'm not really seeing the caustics come through on our cube and that's probably because our light source is so far away. So I might actually experiment with this being more in the background. So I think I'm gonna drag it probably this way, kind of put it back here in the background and see if we can get some caustics kind of popping off of that right about there. Let's go ahead and see if those caustics are coming through. Okay, so those caustics are indeed coming through in the background now, and I think that looks pretty good, but I think I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Cool, and just kind of rotate it a little bit. Just kind of adds a little touch of interest to our scene. Overall, I do think the scene is looking really nice. Again, it's very modern. It's very simple and clean. There's really not much to it, but you know, that's kind of what you get when you start messing with like really simple shapes. And if this is the look that you guys are going for, then that's fantastic. I'm going to kind of expand this a little bit. I'm going to apply that scale and I'm just going to see what that looks like. Yeah, I just kind of wanted this thing to have a little bit more visual interest. Again, we've got our mirror here, our different glass objects. Um, it's just kind of like a fun thing to mess with. I'm gonna add one more. And this one, I'm gonna make this very, very thin. And I'm going to apply the scale as well. And let's go ahead and give this its own little shader here. We'll just give it a new glass shader, a low roughness as usual. Honestly, just probably 0.1 would be a good roughness value just so you can still see through it but you can tell that it is indeed glass and then of course we can do like a slight offset on the x-axis maybe kind of put it right about there now our actual reflective surface here I don't know if I want to do this or not I might mess it up but you could give this just a slight tint like a slight green tint which will kind of make it look a little bit more like a mirror because um, if you've ever looked in a mirror you kind of can see that it is slightly green um, again, this is taking a very long time to render, and that is probably because I'm also recording on OBS as I do this. But again, this is kind of the type of stuff that you have to take into account when you're making tutorials. So um, I might duplicate my light source and just see what happens. I might take this light source, duplicate it, just play around with those angles. Notice how everything changes when I do that. We're now getting like multiple caustic shadows here. And then of course you can mess around with the radius of that as well. I might make this one zero. What is our HDRI? Oh, you know what? I'm also going to make our background a little bit darker. Now we can really see those caustics coming in. Wow. And that is the, that is the difference too. Like the actual background itself is gonna make such a big difference when it comes to these caustics. This looks really, really cool though. I love messing with these like lens looking shapes. I just think they look fantastic. Uh, let's see. Again, the caustics aren't really reaching too much back here. So I think I might actually 
I'm tempted to kind of remove this or just mess around with the color a little bit more. Maybe make it like less saturated. Yeah, I think that looks good. So what do you guys think? Um, I think overall, I'm pretty happy with this. I probably want to get into some render settings here. Under my light paths, I'm going to bump everything up to 20. And I am going to turn filter glossy to zero. Max samples, I'll do like, probably do like 500. And then denoising, I'll just turn on optics. That's fine. It's not really too much I'm going to go over for render settings. I mean, overall, I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out. Um, and I actually do think I might change the dimensions for for YouTube for that thumbnail. Hold on. Yeah, let's actually do this. Let's take our camera. I'm going to delete this cube. I decided I don't want it in the scene anymore. I'm going to go ahead and give this a slight angle like this that I'm gonna delete this cube and you know what I'm just gonna make everything a little bit more uniform here because now my OCD is kind of kicking in it's time to kind of change this up just a little bit now it's not gonna be perfect guys but I'm just gonna try to organize these in a way that makes a little bit more sense like that kind of looks cool it's kind of like a fun they're like all in a row it's kind of nice this one's kind of like standing out to me but Let's see, SY, and I'm going to go ahead and apply that scale. <laughs> it's funny because you could, oh my God, there's so much you can do with mirrors. Mirrors in themselves are just, they're so interesting to me, but especially in Blender because there's nothing you can't do. Let's put that at an exact negative 90. It's really interesting. I guess we don't need the mirror in there, but again, this is kind of like those design choices that you have to make to try to figure out what it is you want this thing to look like. Um, so far, I'm pretty happy with the way we have the caustic set up. I'll probably increase the saturation in post, um, but so far it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to drag this towards our cylinders there. Yeah, honestly, mirror could probably go, but it does look cool. I don't know. I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the mirror might be throwing me off a little bit, but either way, like this is kind of how you create that like side lighting effect where you have these caustics kind of coming through these different lenses. Um, and I think it does look really, really cool. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, depth of field, we can adjust that as needed. I'm going to actually bring our camera angle down just a little bit more. I think that looks pretty cool. Thoughts on this, guys? I'm also going to select one of these for our depth of field object. And I'm going to raise our depth of field to like 5. Kind of open that up a little bit more. Now it's looking a little bit more clear. And then, of course, you can mess with the roughness values. A lot of Blender is really just experimenting and figuring out what you want to accomplish with your render. This is looking so good, though. fantastic fantastic well all right i'm gonna probably wrap it up there guys again i just wanted to show you another way to kind of create that like modern look it really is all experiment like honestly half of it is experimenting with different values figuring out what it is you're looking for but this looks really really cool <laughs> i'm really excited with it um all right guys i won't waste any more time i'm gonna wrap the tutorial up for now um i hope you enjoyed this and like i hope you enjoy these kind of like processes um, again, a lot of it's experimenting, but it's just kind of fun to record it anyway. Throw it up on YouTube. See what you guys think. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next tutorial.